Welcome back. We are almost done with the interpreter, believe it or not. And in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, these two points. First, we're going to add some error handling so we cannot derive from our own class. And I think a good place to do that could be in the resolver, which is where we are now. And we're in this uh, resolve internal, which get co gets called on uh, every statement. And if we have a class statement, uh, then we do the following. We look at the name. Uh, well, rather, we look at whether there is a superclass and we extract the name. And then we can uh, quite easily check. Um, so I think this guy is like uh, um, an identifier. And if that's equal to... Ah, so we shouldn't overwrite that. We should say super name. And if that one is equal to this, then so need to do it here. Class cannot inherit from itself. Now it's complaining. Ah, this is just an expression. So let me remind myself. It's an optional expression. And when we do the passing, what do we actually get? Okay, so when we pass a class declaration and if we get a super class, then we um, put that into a variable. So unfortunately, we have to do something like, let's say, called super expression. And then we have to say, let me close this one. Yeah, we have to say this thing and then that thing and we can ignore the ID and that should do it. And here we need to resolve the expression itself and we can format it so it looks nice and that should do it. So now let's write a test case. So we're going to open up the test, the cases, we're going to make one that's called inherit from self. And it's going to look like this. We have a bagel that inherits from a bagel. We don't really need anything in there. And the expected output should be error. Class cannot inherit from itself. A class cannot inherit from itself. Now, when we run this, we get uh, the correct thing. So let's run the tests. The tests pass, which is good. So now we have handling of this kind of error. So let's go back to our to-do and we can mark this one as done. Now let's write some tests for error cases. This one we already did. Uh, let's write a test case for this one. Inherit from non class and we can make a variable called this is not a class and the bagel will inherit from that one and we want some kind of error output not sure what it should be so let's run it test cases inherit from non-class and what does it say it says superclass must be a class not <laughs> this is not a class uh, we need to change that 
support class must be a class and not we don't want to string we want something else because unwrap a string just trying to remember so it should be actually a value but we kind of want the type i think so let's go in and say to type let's run the command again not super class must be a class not string and this one we don't need and it was called inherit from non class super class must be a class not string yeah then we can run cargo test like a charm let's make a test similar to this where this a variable actually I wonder if you can you cannot assign a class to a variable I think I will wait a second yeah you cannot do this you cannot do this like say a equals some class or can you now i'm not really sure it's kind of weird you're not really sure what the capabilities of your language is gives the same error so let's print b ah, and of course it's Okay, so you can do that. Um, yeah, I guess it makes sense. Like when you decide to define a class, when you run a class statement, it defines a class object in the environment, and then you can just access that through and identify as normal. All right. Next up, we should try to use super in something that is not a method. So I call it super outside method. And we'll write a function that we call um, A. And in here, we'll say super dot test, whatever. And the expected output is an error, and the error is cannot use super outside of a class. At least that's what I would like it to output. Don't think it's gonna output that. Ah, it does output that. Very nice. Let's run the tests just to be sure we didn't make any mistake. Everything passed. And now we should try this one. And We'll make a method called will fail and it's gonna access some method on the non existing superclass. And the expected output is again error and then something that I don't really know yet. And not that cargo run test cases super with. Yeah, so no error, actually no output at all. I wonder what will happen if we do this. 
Yeah, couldn't look up super, so that is not okay. So, I think this is a job for the resolver, because what we're doing is... First we're resolving the superclass, if it's present, and then we're, say, let's say, resolving class, and then resolving methods. So actually inside here, resolve function, we are resolving a specific function which has parameters, it has a body and it has this. So inside this body there should be a super expression. So we should reach this. So let's say, just to check, we'll say resolving super. And now if we run it again, so it does try to resolve it. And what we're going to say is hmm. so resolve local just looks in the scopes and sees if it can find it but if it doesn't find it, it assumes, assumes it's global so that's a bit of a problem here. So actually I want to like look at the scopes and I don't want to look at the last. I want to look at also not that, but like the second to last, I think. So I want to say if this is the case, then we'll say class has no superclass. And I guess we can say all. something like this, but super instead. See if that, oh, see if that works. Cargo run, test cases. And it was called super something, super with no super class. Error class has no super class. Great. Let's remove this debug statement. And Go back to the, that's not how you do it. Class is no super class. Let's run the tests. And it failed. Inheritance within it. Let me run that test case. Cases inheritance in it. So that one is now failing. That's interesting. So ah, so okay. That this one clearly should not fail. So class is no super class. Let me do something like this. It's 
reasonably. So let's say scopes length stat. Let's run the tests. So now there's three. That's good. And then it's trying to look into this one. So I guess I had the count wrong and it should really look like two, two back. Let's just uh, verify that that makes sense. So let's say we have a superclass. We begin a scope. We put the super in there. Then we begin another scope with this. And then there's the scope of the function itself, which I think is made in here. Yeah, so it is actually it is actually three back. So let me go. Uh, let me do three, three, run it. And now it's fine. So let's run the tests. And interestingly, Ah, because this debug has to go. Let's run it again. Okay, beautiful. So now that's working. Let's have a look at this one again. So actually, that's it for this video. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's it. Uh, we are not fully done with the interpreter. But the, because there's one last custom feature I will add, but it is fully working. You can do a lot of things. We need to probably add more functions to the standard library or what you want to call it. But uh, we're basically done. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, Hope you'll join me for the next video, which is the last video in the interpreter series, but won't be the last in the programming language series because next we're gonna try to tackle a compiler. But um, anyway, in the next video, we will try to add one last custom feature to the language. So see you then.